Bob, uh, you and I, Steve, uh, Jeff, uh, Mike Hoss was there also, uh, watched the OTAs this morning. That's, I think the biggest thing to come out of that was to see Foster Morrow on the field. You think about just two months ago, the adversity, a month and yep. a half ago, what, what he was fighting and for him to be back on the field and uh, catching passes from Derek Carr. And uh, I saw he made a couple of throw, uh, uh, pitch and catch combinations with Derek uh, on the little short throws over the middle. And so um, interesting that – but I think that's the big news, that well, Foster was able to participate. And Dennis Allen saying 80 of the 89 players – we're participating now. You had a couple of guys, Trevor Pinning, Cesar Ruiz, um, the running back. Um, and uh, rehab. Uh, Keandre Miller uh, was also. Because of Andrew. Yeah. And also Eno Benjamin. Uh, I noticed he was also on the side working out. But, man, you get 80 to, of 89 there. This is voluntary. It's not mandatory. But a lot of people that were missing with a first-team offensive line. Yeah, first team offensive line in Demario Davis. We know what Demario Davis is going to yeah. do. Um, Michael Thomas. That's not a surprise. I mean, they just took the metal one out of his leg. Uh, again, the fans don't want to hear that, but uh, that's going to be a training camp situation because we need Michael Thomas uh, available. Because uh, I can tell you, uh, they're counting on At Perry. Now he looks the part, Mike. But all like at Wake Forest, what you told me, he had nine drop passes. Well, today he had uh, four targets and three of them he dropped. Back shoulder. Jameis Winston threw him an unbelievable back shoulder throw. Great throw. Uh, he, he dropped it. So uh, he caught one out of four. We need him yeah. to catch four out of four. Strong hands, contested catches in a crowd. Because you notice whether you have the first down on third down or whether you uh, uh, converting into a touchdown in the red zone, not having to settle for a field goal. So I'm interested in that. We're going to get to watch him next Tuesday. We got to watch three OTAs till the mandatory mini camp. He struggled today. So, yeah, I, I, I want to see A.T. Perry. And, Mike, it's all about, you know, whether it's fair or not, it's human nature of first impressions. I mean, I, like, for instance, I look at Derek Carr. Man, he rolled up his sleeve. I think maybe he was trying to get a tan. I don't think he was trying to show his guns, but he had his sleeves uh, rolled up. Uh, Jake Hayner. Man, Drew Brees looks big, big to him. Uh, talk about look little. He could dress out at, at Jesuit High School and look like he could belong. Mike, Jake Hayner. Now, I'm not saying he's not a warrior and not a competitor, but he looked little out there. He throws a nice pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yep. can see nice over-the-top delivery, and he sets his feet and he throws it well. And we were talking, and Jeff Duncan was with us. He was like, like do you remember anybody smaller? And the only guy that could come to mind for me was Ed Hargett. And, Mike, that's going back to what, third round draft pick, 1969? No, he was a 16th round oh, 16, pick. Oh, 16th, yeah, in 1969. In 1969. Yeah, yeah. That's and what he was. Ed was a, wasn't a big guy. He, I think he got listed at 5'11. Mike, 185. <laughs> no, 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 that's skinny. But he sort of looked, he looks a Maybe little bit. Maybe not at 5'11, but that's, that's not a lot of, of weight in 185. Yeah, he sort of looked like Ed Hargett. One of the guys that I thought caught the ball well today, and the first thing I noticed with him, and I was talking to Steve about it, was. Man, um, a crow. Oh, Lucas Crow. Because his body looks different than a year ago. He looks like he's slimmer. He caught the ball really well out front with his hands. He had four targets, four catches. Mike, and if you look at it, Lucas Crow, uh, how he came on the radar, on your radar, and a number of scouts' uh, radar, is what he did at Pitt with guess who? Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett, who's the quarterback now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We had four target, four catches. It would have been, I think his long was about 15 yards. He'd have had about four catches for 35 yards. So, uh, and I asked, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm talking with Coach, and and he said, well, uh, you know, we were, we were talking at the end of practice, Dennis Allen. So, well, we know, we think he, we very confident he can do that. And we want to see him in line blocking as far as being able to set the edge. But, you know, again, first impressions. There's always a first. It's the first time they're competing. Uh, Derek Carr, I think we're going to see a lot more of this. Uh, the first pass, first completion, Derek Carr to Jawan Johnson. Lonnie Johnson is over the top, and he's got an opportunity to make that play. Derek put that in a real tight window throw to Jawan Johnson. He makes the grab. Lonnie was maybe maybe a step late, but he, he was in a position. But, man, Derek put that on a radar. The other thing, too, is Jameis Winston. Bob, he moved so much better than we saw him a year ago at this dealing time. Dealing with the knee injury? He was uh, dealing with the knee, 
Uh, he seems so much better in his movement skills to get back to make a throw. Now, one time he almost fell. Uh, I think it maybe he got caught in the grass a little bit. But he seems so much smoother dropping back and making the throw than certainly from a year ago. But he was coming off that major knee injury. Yeah, uh, Mike, and uh, you know, you bring up uh, uh, the throw to Jawan Johnson in the seam. That was probably uh, the le- most legit type play that you got to do this. Always say this, uh, but like uh, five or six times a game when he hit uh, Jawan Johnson in the seam because it wasn't necessarily bad coverage. That was a small window, and he was able to get in there. And and I, I was gonna say, well, that that's probably gonna be the play of the day because they hit a lot of checkdowns. But then the, the play of the day, you know who looks like he's matured, is Chris Olave. Yep. Uh, you, you look at uh, Chris Olave, when he was targeted, he, w- he was catching it, and he caught it was a post uh, a route. Uh, uh, I, I call it a bomb because a great catch, uh, plus 50 yards out. Not good for the defense. I don't know in a real game if Marcus May would have made the play, but he didn't make the play. So you got Chris Olave beating Marcus May, plus 50-yard uh, catch. And that ball was... Wank, 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 wank. Oh, it was a, that was a duck. So Chris Olave made Derek Carr look good. So as a quarterback, you always love that. Well, you, you didn't necessarily throw the pass that you wanted, and it was uh, wobbling out there. It was a wobbling. And, and uh, Chris Olave came down with it. So I would say that was the two big plays of the day. Uh, Derek Carr to Jawan Johnson in the seam. And Derek Carr to Chris Olave coming up with that uh, 50 yard bomb. The other thing, too, is uh, notice Kirk Merritt spent most of his time at running back, not at wide receiver. He was working as a halfback today. Well, uh, Mike, uh, I, you know, we need uh, the more you could do. You know, we always talk about defensive players are your nickel corner, your nickel safety, whatever you could do. No, if you're able to be a running back receiver slash receiver running back, no, gives you, gives you a better opportunity to make the team and then also as a returner on special teams. So so good for him. See, now they, 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 um, they're not wet behind the ears, so to speak, Mike. Uh, they should know the offense like the back of their hand. And so instead of thinking and reacting, now they should be able to just react. I saw Kurt uh, play so much running back when he was that desperate hand, too. It's, it's, it's not new to him. 